My name is John Barton, I'm the MUS class of 1995 and president of the MUS Alumni Executive Board. I'd like to welcome Dr. John Harkins, his wife Georgia, members of the Harkins family who are with us tonight, our distinguished faculty, faculty emerita, and special guests to the unveiling of the ninth portrait in a series of faculty portraits that are displayed here in the dining hall. The alumni board determined the criteria for selecting each faculty portrait recipient. To qualify, nominees cannot be a current member of the faculty and must have served MUS for a minimum of 15 years. They can also be retired from the school. We are here this evening to honor longtime teacher, Dr. John E. Harkins whom the alumni board selected as the ninth subject in the faculty portrait series. Dr. Harkins inspired hundreds of students in his history classroom during his nearly three decades at MUS. Equally as important, Dr. Harkins is a beloved friend and mentor to his former students and colleagues. Our remarks this evening begin with Clayton Chandler, a member of the class of 1997. As a student, Clayton was on the varsity golf team, worked on the newspaper staff, was inducted into the Latin Honor Society and the Cum Laude Society. He was a National Merit Finalist. After MUS, Clayton went on to earn his degree from Washington and Lee University. Prior to attending law school, he worked four years in the Cap uh, Capital Markets Group at Morgan Keegan. In 2008, Clayton earned his uh, JD from the University of Memphis School of Law and joined the law firm of Evans and Petrie. He focuses his practice in the areas of corporate transactions and business <coughs> litigation. Ladies, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Clayton Chandler. Introduction. It is certainly an honor and a privilege to be back on campus for this occasion. When I was first approached by Perry uh, DeMint to speak in honor of Dr. Harkins, I was immediately very flattered. Dr. Harkins had been my homeroom teacher throughout upper school, my favorite history teacher, and more generally, a mentor and counselor. The more I began to think about the task, however, I became increasingly intimidated. How does a 34 year old former student begin to appropriately speak on behalf? of perhaps the most distinguished, most decorated, and perhaps most beloved teacher at MUS. As Dr. Harkins himself might say, uh, well, uh, <laughs> and for those of you that have had Dr. Harkins, I hope you'll appreciate the, uh, uh, the, the, the truth of the matter is that Dr. Harkins is indeed the most beloved MUS figure in my eyes, in the, class, in the eyes of the class of 1997, and in the eyes of the MUS community as a whole. As such, preparing these remarks has been made much easier by the legions of devoted Harkins disciples. In fact, my biggest hurdle in preparing these remarks has been narrowing down and synthesizing all the Harkins lore that exists out there. Indeed, as this portrait series illustrates, iconic and beloved teachers are largely what makes MUS so special and enduring in the Memphis community and cherished among alumni and friends. In my era, 1990s, Dr. Harkins was perhaps the most universally beloved, cherished, and respected figure of all. I think that remains to a large extent the case today. There are many reasons. His distinguished resume comes immediately to mind. <coughs> Master's degree from LSU, PhD from the University of Memphis, seven years in the Navy, author among other books of Metropolis of the American Nile, and of course the U.S. Century book. That caliber of re resume alone establishes immediate respect even in, or per perhaps I should say, especially in, impressionable high school students. Additionally, and quite simply, Dr. Harkins was excellent in the classroom as an instructor in history. When you couple that with his encyclopedic knowledge of and unsurpassed enthusiasm for his subject, a Dr. Harkins history class was simply the most interesting and most enjoyable class a student could take at MUS. As fellow member of the class of 1997, J 
John Petty, young John Petty told me, after a number of years, what stands out with me with respect to Dr. Harkins was his passion for history, the subject matter itself. While I definitely remember his quick wit and how, injected, how he injected humor into the seemingly mundane, his passion for history, particularly local history, was like nothing I've ever seen, including in college. That's coming from Amherst College graduate. Finally, and perhaps most importantly in making Dr. Harkins perhaps the most beloved figure at NUS during my time, was the care and respect he had for his students. I recall one Saturday, the morning after Harkins sadly lost their fine son, Billy, too early, a practice AP exam had been scheduled for a class. In typical Dr. Harkins fashion, he was in the classroom bright and early, stoically conducting the exam for his students, even while he and Georgia were undoubtedly overcome with grief so the students could carry on as usual. Only after the exam, John Petty, who I mentioned above, had bumped into Mr. Haywood in the hall and conveyed to us that Billy had passed away the day before. That day remains with, with all of us who were, who were touched as a lasting example not only of courage, but of selflessness and devotion to the NUS community and his students. I recently spoke with Justin Giles, a member of the class of 1996 and a colleague of mine at Evans Petrie. I knew Justin was, a long, was long a passionate devotee of Dr. Harkins and told him that I'd been asked to make a few remarks at today's unveiling. Justin was ecstatic that the school had chosen Dr. Harkins, Dr. Harkins for this high honor, and he told me the following story. Dr. Harkins has made a lasting impression on my life. I was having a little bit of academic trouble my junior year, and Dr. Harkins really took me under his wing as a teacher and mentor. Took Dr. Harkins for summer school after my junior year and excelled in his class. I took another history class again as a senior and again excelled. Why did I excel in Dr. Harkins' classes? One, Dr. Harkins made history engaging, interesting, and enjoyable. I wanted to learn. Aside from that, Dr. Harkins is the kind of gentleman that you do not want to let down. You always want to do well for Dr. Harkins. I did well in his class, one, because I loved the class, and two, because I respected him and refused to let him down with anything other than my best effort. I can honestly say, if it were not for Dr. Harkins taking an interest in me as a junior at NUS, I do not think I would be where I am today. His impact on my life and career has been that substantial. This past weekend, I was in Ohio for the wedding of a, a fellow member of the class of 1997, John Scroggs. Like myself, John is a local history junkie, and I've long known him to also be a Harkins disciple. When I told John that Dr. Harkins had been chosen as this year's honoree, he was, like Justin Giles, ecstatic. He told me the following. I had Dr. Harkins twice, including one summer school stint to take American history. I took ill with a bacterial infection in my throat and missed the final, which he graciously allowed me to make up in his living room the next week after I recovered. I drove over to West Crestwood one morning and was welcomed to an, into his home for my exam. This was shortly after the untimely death of his son, Billy Harkins, from what I recall. We had a great student-teacher relationship, and I later wrote, wrote him a recommendation, at his request, for a DAR award nomination. He received the award, as he should have, and I doubt my words were necessary for or helped that awards committee decision. I later asked Dr. Harkins, in turn, to write one of my college recommendation letters, and I know it carried weight in my acceptance to the University of Colorado and Middlebury. John is unable to be here since he is actually honeymooning in, in, in Spain, but he does send his deepest regards. However, as luck would have it, I've been able to get my hands on a copy of the letter that John wrote on Dr. Harkins' behalf. I would like to take just a second to read a few excerpts from it, as it is an eloquent, eloquent tribute from student to teacher, and it articulates how highly all of us from the class of 1997 and beyond regard Dr. Harkins. This is from John's letter back in 1996. Dr. Harkins not only teaches history, but also chronicles and preserves it as well. His devotion to the preservation of Memphis history became an integral part of our studies in American history. Dr. Harkins organized a trip to the Memphis Room at the main library in order to introduce us to the extensive collection on Memphis history. The trip was a starting point for each student's local history paper. Dr. Harkins also took advantage of a nearby Kirby farm by arranging for our class to visit this historical treasure nestled in East Memphis. I reflect on my experiences in Dr. Harkins' class and appreciate his dedication in making Memphis history come alive as part of my studies. I'll skip some portions and then read towards the conclusion. Dr. Harkins goes above and beyond what is necessary to meet the needs of his students. And then he 
so concludes. Dr. Harkin's thorough, interesting instruction, model character, and devotion to Memphis history distinguish him as the most extraordinary teacher that I've ever had. Before I conclude, I will take, to, take a moment to recount a slightly lighter story. Several years ago, an MUS uh, alumnus, class of 1998, and true prodigy among, around these parts, named Srinivas Iyagari, appeared on Jeopardy as a contestant. As any of you who know Srinivas would have uh, bet, he was a Jeopardy champion. Uh, what many of you may not know was that he credits his winnings to Dr. Harkins. As Srinivas wrote to Dr. Harkins in February of 2008, Everyone is asking me how I knew about Emile Zola and the Dreyfus Affair, and I can honestly say it was AP European History in 10th grade and nowhere else. I'm still trying to, Dr. Harkins and I joked about this, I'm still trying to figure out whether it was our world-renowned entrepreneur David Sachs from the class of 1990 and PayPal fame, or perhaps secretly our Jeopardy champion friend Srinivas, who's responsible for naming the archives in Dr. Harkins' honor earlier this year. I guess we'll never know who all was behind. As you can now see, making a few remarks on Dr. Harkin's behalf has been quite easy. My fellow alumni have come out of the woodwork and besieged me with fine memories and high praise, as we all would have expected. And it has been a moving experience to read and hear the various reminiscences from my friends and classmates. As I conclude and turn the podium over to much more eloquent friends here today, Mr. Thompson, Mr. Haywood, and others, I want to reiterate what a lasting impression Dr. Harkins has made on my life and on the life of all my classmates. As my homeroom teacher, history instructor, mentor, and friend, like so many others, I've benefited tremendously from Dr. Harkin's wisdom, enthusiasm, and I'm forever grateful. Thank you. Thanks, Clayton. Next up, I'm pleased to call on Mr. Norman Thompson, instructor in English who will speak to us on behalf of the faculty. Mr. Thompson joined MUS in 1972 and has shaped the minds and grammar of MUS students for over four decades. In addition to his teaching duties, Mr. Thompson serves as a newspaper advisor, the honor council advisor, and he has been the voice of the owls at the home football games for 28 years. He received the Distinguished Teaching Award in 1995 and the John M. Nail Excellence in Teaching Award in 2007. Mr. Thompson holds the L. Edwin Eliezer III Chair of Excellence in Teaching. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Mr. Norman Thompson. Ambrose Bierce in the Devil's Dictionary defined history as an account mostly false of events mostly unimportant, which are brought about by rulers mostly knaves and soldiers mostly fools. The historian he had one word earlier defined as a broad gauge gossip. I cite Bierce's snarky definitions on this august occasion, the dedication of the portrait of our favorite historian Dr. John Harkins for two reasons. One is that Dr. Harkins' keen sense of humor will allow him to snicker at the snarkiness of Bierce's tongue-in-cheek sniping. Dr. Harkins possesses the self-awareness to laugh at himself as he possesses the wit and perspicacity to laugh at the world and its foolish inhabitants, both current and historical. The other reason for my reference to the witticisms of Ambrose Bierce is to show that the life and career of Dr. John Harkins so manifestly belies both definitions. Dr. Harkins' life and work are irrefutable arguments against the airy dismissal of the lessons of history and of the indispensable educational function of the dedicated historian. As I remarked on another occasion, one honoring Dr. Harkins' retirement from the classroom, Shakespeare's Mark Antony said with a good deal of irony, I am no orator as Brutus is, but as you know me all, a plain, blunt man that loved my friend. Without any irony whatsoever, I say the same thing about myself. 
I am painfully aware of the inadequacy of my limping words to express my feelings for and gratitude to my friend, Dr. John Harkins. That Shakespeare, that Shakespeare reference reminds me of another that I find apt. In Henry IV, part two, the king speaking to his son says, learn this and thou shalt prove a shelter to thy friends, a hoop of gold to bind thy brothers in. John has been over many years a hoop of gold binding faculty brothers and sisters together in the pursuit of truth, yes, but in the spirit of camaraderie and unity of purpose also. Back in the day, as the idiom would have it, in the free-thinking conclaves held in the male faculty lounge, an anachronistic institution which, lamentably or not, depending on one's perspective, is no longer an MUS tradition, a place where totemic figures like Bill Hatchett, Evan Perdue, Skip Daniel, and Mike Dederick uttered opinions and wove tales, later distilled into quotable aphorisms that are now part of MUS folklore. John Harkins often held court like a taciturn Solomon, a corrective voice of reason. In this creative place, a maelstrom of hyperbole and outright invention, Dr. Harkins could be trusted to further the argument under discussion or to refute it conclusively with facts, not with fancy, the commodity most available in any lounge. Though retired from the classroom, John can be found any day in the archives room dedicated to him through the largesse of one of his devoted erstwhile students. Here in his tone-laden lair, he can be found rummaging around in the dust bin of the past like a kleptomaniacal magpie squirreling away nuggets from times gone by, which, but for John's obsessive reclamation efforts, would be lost forever in the dissolving mists of time. His labors are tireless and ongoing. Nothing relative to the history of MUS, however seemingly irrelevant, escapes his archival eye. Not very long ago, he asked me for copies of my chapel talks. If these he deemed worth saving, I wonder what he would consider unworthy of salvage. <laughs> Just this summer, he and his estimable, estimable wife, Georgia, dropped by my office on their way to scavenge any ancient artifacts left behind by Jim Russell, recently retired. As Mrs. Bonnie Barnes, director of the Hyde Library Learning Center, will bear witness, Dr. John arrives every day early, opens the library, and goes to work on the phone or on his computer. She reminisced one day when asked about Dr. Harkins' daily routine, saying, and I quote, if we stop to ask him a question, he never fails to come up with a story, one that may meander like a lazy river, but that will also pick up bits and pieces of debris from the shore as it meanders. <laughs> We'll, we'll hear about the lineage and exploits of a crotchety old Memphian or an alumnus who dabbled in politics, and at some point in the story, there will be a chance to contribute and add something from our own lives or to ask another question. She remarked that if you don't get an answer when you ask Vance Lauderdale, then you have only to ask John Harkins and brace yourself for an answer. <laughs> Dr. Harkins has for some time written articles in The Best Times in which he has made the rich history of Memphis and Shelby County come alive again to entertain and edify the non-specialist reader. For me, my colleagues, and innumerable students, Dr. Harkins has significantly tr contributed to our years at MUS as among the best times of our lives. As I have said before, one of the greatest compliments that I've ever been paid was John's asking me to help him in Georgia edit his MUS Century book in 1993. We thank you, Doctor, for the memories and for the knowledge and the scholarly attitude that you imparted to us. We will continue to be inspired by your benign and sagacious presence, looking down on us from your framed image on the wall as we consume our country fried steak and prepare to launch another error-filled opinion or reminiscence that only your corporeal presence could correct. 
Dr. John's contributions to MUS in his 26 or so years of dedicated service to and love of MUS, despite the handicap of having graduated from CBHS, <laughs> are incalculable and continuing. I, along with all of you, rejoice to see the portrait of my colleague, mentor, and friend, Dr. John Harkins, join the pantheon of teacher heroes gracing the walls of this dining hall. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Thompson. It's now my distinct pleasure to introduce Mr. Ellis Hagwood, headmaster of Memphis University School, Mr. Haywood is known by generations of alumni and students as an outstanding educator and a remarkable leader. He came to MUS in 1969. In his years as headmaster, Mr. Haywood has led the campus through a tremendous transformation, all the while preserving the strengths and traditions that make this such a great school. Ladies and gentlemen, our esteemed headmaster, Mr. Ellis Haywood. deeply grateful that the Alumni Executive Board has committed its energy and resources to this faculty portrait series. Because in a very fitting way, the portraits remember and honor distinguished teachers who have a revered place in the hearts and minds of MUS alumni. And I'm delighted that our alumni have chosen Dr. John Harkins to know that his portrait will join those of old friends and colleagues like Lee McQueen and John Murray Springfield behind me and on this wall Jerry Peters, Jake Rudolph, Bill Hatchett, Mike Dedrick, Betty Jo Higgs, and Skip Daniel. Their portraits now await his as these great teachers in a way with these portraits remain timeless, unaging, present. And with this portrait, we celebrate Dr. John Harkin's 26 years at Memphis University School at three distinct times, uh, 1968 to 1970, one year in the mid-70s, 1974 and five, and then 23 years from 1986 until his retirement in 2009. And John, like any good historian, I wanted to get my facts straight first, then I can distort them as I please. <laughs> he holds a BS from the University of Memphis, an MA in history from Louisiana State University, and of course a PhD in history from the University of Memphis. He's also studied at the University of Guadalajara, Guadalajara, Mexico, and at the United States National Archives Institute. As mentioned earlier, he spent a few years in the United States Navy. And of course, like any sailor worth his salt, he has a number of slightly embellished stories about those days with which he has sometimes regaled captive audiences of students assembled in Hyde Chapel. A frequent speaker in those assemblies, his talks more often dealt with aspects of Memphis history, MUS history, or national concerns. When visiting lecturers spoke to our boys and asked for questions, Dr. Harkins could always be counted on to break the ice with a pungent query. Now, in an effort to describe his speaking style, I searched internet advice about public speaking and found an article that I think sheds light on what students and faculty heard and came to expect from him each time he spoke. The writer in this article suggested, quote, before speaking, you should pause for at least two seconds. You appear to be organizing your thoughts, and thus you seem intelligent. <laughs> Once you do speak, speak slowly. 
though not so slow as to seem to have a mental issue. <laughs> when you speak slowly, you will not seem to be struggling to collect your thoughts and will appear to know exactly what you are saying, even if you are making it up as you go. <laughs> Today, I think we must remark the impressive breadth and depth of history courses that he taught here over the years. The uh, required for graduation courses in American history and European history and their advanced placement counterparts and the elective courses he created over the years when the schedule would allow. Recent American history, history of the Civil War, history of Memphis, Mexican history, Russian history. His ability as an instructor received recognition. He held the endowed Ross Lynn Chair of History, acknowledging his scholarship and erudition from 1992 until his retirement. He earned the Distinguished Teaching Award at MUS in 1996. The Daughters of the American Revolution named him Outstanding American History Teacher for Tennessee in 1997. And as chairman of the history department here, he displayed discerning leadership and effective organization. Outside the school, he has displayed those same characteristics and a desire to encourage community awareness of our history. President of the West Tennessee Historical Society, president of descendants of early settlers of Shelby County, appointee to both the Shelby County Historical Commission and the Tennessee Historical Commission. Christian Brothers High School named him to the CBHS Hall of Fame. MUS, in an attempt to mitigate that designation, <laughs> made him an honorary alumnus in 2008. A real historian, as well as a teacher, John has written, of course, a number of articles in historical journals, encyclopedias, and he's the author of Metropolis of the American Now, a history of Memphis and Shelby County, the MUS Century Book, a history of Memphis University School, and uh, John, as Churchill once said, history will be kind to me for I intend to write it. You uh, <laughs> wrote the history of MUS. The New Orleans Cabildo, a reworking of his doctoral dissertation about the seat of Spanish colonial government, and most recently, historic Shelby County and illustrated history. He still writes a lively monthly column for the best times, a collection of those articles uh, avail available in paperback, and he is well into writing a history of the Lausanne School. And ever by his side, ever by his side, his devoted encourager, Georgia. Herself a teacher and tutor, radiating the unfading beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit. Now these words from Proverbs could easily have been written of her. A wife of noble character, who can find? She is worth far more than rubies. Her husband has full confidence in her and lacks nothing of value. She brings him good, not harm, all the days of her life. Retired now from his role as classroom teacher and department chair, John Harkins remains a true scholar, an excellent writer, and a man who loves Memphis University School. After his retirement, it has been our good fortune that he stayed on as school archivist and historian. His intellectual honesty and objectivity his commitment to honor and fairness, his loyalty to the school and his willingness to put the school ahead of any personal gain, his wealth of knowledge and his insatiable desire to learn, his wry sense of humor and his pleasant collegiality, all of these characteristics made him an ideal faculty member, scholar, teacher. He always saw the big picture. Over the years, his work outside the classroom has brought considerable prestige, prestige to MUS because it's rare that an independent school has within its history department 
a real historian. And as mentioned earlier, as a student, David Sachs, class of 1990, came to appreciate and respect Dr. Harkins as a history teacher. For a short time, while John was the advisor to the school yearbook, he worked closely with David Sachs, who was the editor-in-chief of the 8990 book. David has kept in touch with Dr. Harkins over the years and recently sought a way to honor him here at school. As a result, David Sachs made a very generous gift to the school and recently we named and dedicated the John Harkins Archives Room in the Hyde Library. I have the very highest personal and professional regard for John Harkins. No one has encouraged and supported me more over the years that I've been headmaster. He's been a mentor and friend and a faculty member who was honest with me when he felt I had erred. For me and for many of us, he is one of only a handful of people who have come to define the MUS experience. One of the few great teachers and faculty members in the history of this school. William James wrote, the great use of a life is to spend it for something that outlasts it. John Harkin's scholarly accomplishment and his many contributions to MUS and to our community will long outlive his life. Congratulations. portrait of Dr. Harkins is by award-winning artist Steve Moppert from Chattanooga, Tennessee. We are honored that Mr. Moppert could be with us this evening. Mr. Moppert, would you please stand? <laughs> Mr. Moppert received the natural, I'm sorry, the National Portrait Society's prestigious Grand Prize Award in 1981 and he has garnered recognition for his work in national periodicals and newspapers. He has been featured in the Colorado Homes and Lifestyle and the Mississippi Magazine. And in 2000, his portrait work was featured in the International Artist Magazine. He has been represented by galleries from New York to Arizona. Thank you, Mr. Moffert, for your outstanding talent. We appreciate you being here with us this evening. Now I'd like to ask Dr. and Mrs. Harkins to join Mr. Haywood and I as we unveil the portrait. Just stay things that my friend said 
uh, from uh, their remarks. Uh, and uh, I'll, I'll be blushing for the duration, I guarantee you, of that. Uh, I do want to thank Georgia uh, for all she's done, all the support that she's been uh, through all of these undertakings, whether I was doing an all-nighter to get an exam ready or to try to get a, a paper in to meet a deadline or something like that. She has been unfailingly patient and supportive, uh, and uh, she's the number one accomplishment uh, in these 75 years. Two other quick things. One, I asked her to marry me two years before she did, and I've never forgiven her for the delay. Uh, and two, I would have stayed here in 74, 75, I accept the school couldn't afford to keep me even at the wages we were paid then. Uh, so uh, I just want that to be uh, absolutely clear. I can't thank you enough for the generosity that you've shown me tonight. Uh, and uh, I don't know what else to say. Let me give you back the mic. Stay and visit. Please come and congratulate Dr. Dr. Harkins before you head home. Thank you.